Hello. Well, today is uh, I'm going to talk about the final installment of the uh, Batman anthology uh, set that I have. That of course is uh, Batman and Robin. Um, now this film is uh, seen as a low point in the franchise for many reasons. Uh, Bat nipples are in this installment. Um, they were in the uh, in Batman Forever, so this isn't the exclusive uh, time it's ever happened. However, it is quite notable for being just very in your face and very clear. I think it's because of the uh, sort of design of the bat suit and as well as the Robin suit, and that is very prominent. Um, I would say that's the big factor. Um, um, George Clooney steps in as a uh, Batman Bruce Wayne mainly because Val Kilmer was doing another film and wasn't able to get back in time. Uh, get back to him in time to be like, yeah, I can do this or not. And it's just Time was basically of the essence, and, uh, yeah, it just didn't work out, so we got George Clooney, and, um, yeah, he's not a very good Batman or Bruce Wayne, um, I guess he could be a better Bruce Wayne, it's just, again, the script here doesn't really work in his favor much at all. Nor does it really work with anybody's uh, favor for the most part. Um, Chris O'Donnell is Robin Dick Grayson again. Um, yeah, same thing there. He does his best, but you know. But this film, this time, it's more campy. Batman Forever, while it did have a tonal shift that didn't really help its case for, in terms of the film, it being a, a very good film. This film embraces the campiness and no longer is there any dark elements to this uh, film, to this franchise at this point. The dark elements are gone and it's just more campy. Um, now that can work for some people. Uh, but for others uh, who really enjoy watching the uh, series unfold from being dark to then get to this uh, point, it's quite disappointing. Now, I will say, um, I did enjoy this film as a kid. I was like three when the film was out. And, um, yeah, I... <clears throat> uh, I remember ha having a birthday with Batman kick and also uh, action figures and stuff, um, which the last two installments seem to be very oriented around the action figures, and, and this film in particular. Um, you could say the same, uh, it began in particular with Batman Forever and maybe even Batman Returns, but this movie itself really it was like there's a lot of action figures and stuff like and sets and vehicles. It's like they wanted people to buy the f figures and stuff and uh, the figures are actually pretty good. I um, believe I still have some of those um, still, so they were actually pretty cool. Um, I think I believe they still are. Uh, but outside of that, it's like you know, it's just to you know, when watching these in order, you see a decline, and it really is like a. Some say the nail in the coffin for the franchise, at least for a while. Um, 
but uh you know you have also Mr. Freeze now as the villain played by Arnold Schwarzenegger who's very goofy I think he's one of the best parts of this film um but he has a lot of ice puns and that's just very not very uh gets very tiresome after a while. It's just, it gets like, are we ever going to uh, have him stop at some point? Um, and he does, but, you know, uh, for a bit, um, at certain moments, but, uh, you know, and he, they uh, make Mr. Freeze a very sympathetic character, you know, his wife is genetically frozen uh, as he's trying to find a cure for a disease that she has and um, you know there is some emotional uh, stuff to this film and um, I remember seeing somebody like talking about this film where if you think of the plot of it where you know that you know Alfred has this disease which is the same disease as um, Mr. Freeze's wife and uh, both are trying to find the disease and find it so they can uh, save their loved ones, you know, and in the midst of that, you know, Batman and Mr. Freeze are fighting against each other and Robin also. Um, but, you know, as the uh, it goes on, you're kind of like, It's just this the the execution of the film is what like where this drama is is sort of in the back burner basically it's it's there but it probably would have been it probably would have worked better if it was more in the, in the forefront um, um, Poison Ivy um, uh, played by Uma Thurman. Um, She's also another villain. Um, she does a fine job. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't really have anything uh, big to say about her. Um, she's fine. She, you know, seducing um, like men and whoever with like a sense, like a so like fragrance and stuff like she has that makes a, a whoever she has a, smell it um, like fall in love with her and um, you know her lips are toxic so if you kiss her you're probably gonna <laughs> you're gonna die or um, else you have some sort of uh, immune uh, Unless you're immune somehow, um, yeah, you probably die. Um, the uh, another uh, aspect to this is a uh, Batgirl, um, Barbara Wilson instead of Barbara Barbara Gordon. Um, she's not the commissioner's uh, daughter. She's instead Alfred Pennyworth's niece um, from England. And yeah, uh, Alicia Silverstone plays her. Yeah, yeah, not not an incredible performance. Not there's not too many fantastic performances in this film. Some are goofy, but you know, with this film and going uh, the campier out, I guess you can kind of expect that. But the. Uh, Yeah, just some stuff, some of the decisions that were made. Um, obviously, the studio was very involved in the meddling. Whatever Joel Schumacher wanted to do with it, didn't get to do it. Um, that's unfortunate. He, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like there was any... Um, uh, 
any sort of, uh, from what I can tell, uh, very dark moments, like dark tones that he wanted in this film compared to like Batman Forever, um, which is unfortunate because um, it's not like there's like a there was could have been a cut where Batman Robin was darker, but was then more juxtaposed with campiness. That doesn't seem to be the case here. Um, this film um, was really designed to make uh, sell toys, and uh, which you know, if that's something that people like and think that's cool, well, all right. But that doesn't really rub people the right way. It's like you should make a good movie. If the movie is good, and people will buy other products related to it. Uh, afterwards, but this doesn't seem to be the case here. Um, uh, as I said, I watched this film when I was younger. Um, enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, but as I read more comics and I rewatched the other films and also got more into the Batman TV show with Adam West... I didn't watch this uh, movie much. Um, then if things like, you know, Commissioner Gordon st uh, had a daughter named Barbara Gordon instead of, you know, it being Barbara Wilson. Um, and a lot of people also say, how why doesn't she have a British accent? And, you know, it's one of those good questions why Alicia Silverstone doesn't have a British accent. Obviously, you know, she's not. British, but also, uh, I don't know, they could have written something where maybe he had a relative, relatives that lived in America, um, and sent their daughter to, uh, like a boarding school in England, and then, like, she is home quite a bit, um, but was able to get into the school, maybe recent so she's over there and then comes back and could explain why she doesn't have a British accent but that's just something that I've noticed people talk about and then as sort of like not really a huge problem but just something that's like a nitpick um, and with this film yeah uh, this is a movie that a lot of people just pick apart and make fun of and um as time has gone on, and I've rewatched this a number of times, especially with this version, with the uh, various d uh, behind the scenes um, stuff, um, I, I find myself um, enjoying it in a, in a uh, so bad it's good. Kind of way. I know some might think that, you know, well, if that's the case, well, it might not be worth watching much. And I could understand that, especially with how the tone was set from Batman 1989 and then how we get to this film. But if you watch it in a way where it's just like it's bad, it's cheesy, it's not very good, yet there's still some entertainment value out of it, out, out of this film, from that. I think it's worth watching. And I think watching uh, the film with, like, behind the scenes, uh, the various documentaries and stuff, um, there's also um, commentary where he, where they, where Joel Schumacher talks about the making of the film a bit more in depth in any of the interviews and documentaries and like featurettes and stuff um yeah i uh i think people could uh enjoy this more um it's one of those films that as i watch more behind the scenes stuff of it and hear from people who are involved with the film i have an appreciation for this that um while not overtly positive and in the sense of it being a legitimately good film, uh, especially following up the 
previous installments of this series, um, there is still some entertainment value. And, you know, that's what a movie should do. It should entertain you. Um, you know, if you're entertained for two hours, then it did its job. Um, I will say the, um, the music, like the soundtrack to this and Batman Forever are excellent also, as well as the score. Um, obviously, you know, Danny, Elf Danny Elfman left the franchise with um, Tim Burton, but uh, yeah, Elliot Goldenthal, um, he did a great job making uh, to put the scores to these films. It might have been better if they had the actual score from the previous installments inter in interfused with this, but um, with these films, but. The score is unique and interesting, and um, it's actually pretty good. I know there are people who would like to have the score available to buy, like, as a CD or somewhere on like a on iTunes or somewhere to buy. But from what I've been able to see, they haven't really been able to do that much, mainly because the sales for uh, the Batman Forever score were very low. Like many people didn't buy that. They bought the soundtrack with all the like the rock songs and stuff. So that sold well. And as did the uh uh soundtrack uh to this film, you know, you had Seal and the uh, Batman Forever and here you have Smashing Pumpkins and R. Kelly and Bone Thugs and Harmony and you also have some music videos here. I believe they have some of Batman Forever also. Um, but yeah, this film may not be excellent. may not be great. may not have the best performances for some people. But I think there is some entertainment value in here. Um, cheesy and campy, but fun. Um... But that wasn't really the best direction to go in with this, you know. Um, I guess because of the more lighter tone of Batman Forever, Warner Brothers thought that was the way to go. Make it lighter and have very few, if any, dark elements in the Batman movie. And, uh, yeah, we, we all know how well that turned out. Um, of course, in the midst of this and how for almost... Uh, a decade there was no uh, Batman film live action at least I know there was various uh, animated films and stuff made but yeah the live action films were put on hold um, but if it wasn't for this film making it to where people were like we're not gonna see this film these movies anymore if this is how you're gonna Batman's gonna be interpreted, then Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy would not have been made. I know there was going to be a fifth installment, like Batman Triumphant was the biggest thing that's often been called. Um, and there's Batman Unchained, which is also, I think, another... what it was going to be called also. <clears throat> um, but... Uh, it seems like that was going to be more serious. You know, they're going to have Scarecrow. Um, I think they're going to get Nicolas Cage to be Scarecrow. Madonna was going to be like Harley Quinn. She was going to be like the daughter of uh, um, the Joker. And then he was going to get, Batman was going to get gassed and he was going to be, have to fight all the villains that he previously fought with. The last one being cameo by Jack Nicholson and also like... Uh, Like, he also, they would judge him for all he has done and stuff. Like, he's killed people and he's sent them away and all this and that. So, um, I don't know how that would have been. Um, the way it, it, you can find and look at what the film is going to be about. And there have been videos that people have made from what people can piece together and how this would have been a darker version, but... Uh, like a 
this uh, part of the franchise, you know, sort of get it back on track. Um, and George Clooney was apparently going to return. Joel Schumacher was going to come back, and Chris O'Donnell, and I think Alicia Silverstone also. I've heard some things where, you know, Barbara Gordon, you know, Batgirl was either going to die or she wasn't going to die. Um, I don't know. Uh, of course, it was just in development and they're like, uh, Warner Brothers was so impressed with the dailies that they, uh, before the film was even released, they commissioned a sequel to be written. But then once the uh, film didn't do well at the box office, they canceled it and uh, tried to do something new, but as we all know, that took almost a decade before anything new with Batman uh, um, materialized. And uh, yeah, I've talked about those films quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I'm going to talk about the uh, Ben Affleck uh, version of uh, of Batman. Um, not that I don't want to, it's just, you know, that's still sort of ongoing, and these films are done, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, uh, maybe later in the year I can pick this up and uh, rewatch some of those. I just kind of wanted to do these core four films as well as the Adam West movie, just because I'd want to do. I wanted to talk about them for a, quite some time, but just kept putting them off. I know at times these videos were a bit sporadic, but you know, I think as we go on with this series, I kind of. I don't know if that's totally uh, uh, completely surprising in that you know some of the tonal shifts kind of go back and forth um but i uh yeah uh as much as uh, this film is seen as one of the worst films ever made i find entertainment out of it and it's so bad it's good kind of way and um i guess whether one thinks that's a good thing or not i guess that's up to for you to decide um i'm fine with that thinking and who knows, maybe as uh, I could watch other movies that, you know, might not like, but maybe you see them in a so bad they're good sort of way also. I mean, for years I didn't really enjoy this movie much at all. And only sort of began to enjoy it to an extent when watching it um, after uh, seeing the behind-the-scenes documentaries. Um, only then did I start to sort of enjoy it for so bad it's good. Um, and maybe that's the, that could be the case for other films that I'm not too fond of. Um, but we'll see. Um, and with that, that concludes my uh, thoughts on the Batman Anthology. 1989 to 1997. This was a interesting journey to go on, um, but fun nonetheless, and I, of course I just dropped it, the top of it, but oh well, that happens, come on, there, yeah, so, what do you think of this, these, uh, Batman and Robin, you like it, dislike it, like me, do you, uh, enjoyed it in a so bad it's good kind of way. What do you think of all four of these films? Do you enjoy them or dislike some of them? Love one, dislike the rest, or like half? Uh, let me know if you'd like uh, to say anything. Um, yeah. So this bat journey is, in, is at an end now. That was a terrible pun. And, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below if you would like. And, um, yeah. 
I hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week. See you all next time. Bye.